What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Barbells and Trails podcast. I'm here, uh, episode 38. I'm losing track. We're get, I say we're pushing close to a year. We still have three months, roughly, eh, somewhere around there. Uh, this is the second episode of the year. I'm glad everybody is here. We're here. We're here, you know? And why you are here, maybe you should consider, you know, subscribing and hitting the bell icon and maybe listening to it on Spotify whatever you want to listen to, but either, either way, we're going to get into it. Um, today I'm just, I, you know what? I'm going to talk about game of Thrones and you want to know why I watched game of Thrones, the full show. And I believe in 10 days, I watched the entire TV show in 10 days I recorded the podcast last time, and I told you I was getting into it, and uh, I, th- I, if I remember correctly, I started watching it on January 1st, the first of the year, and I finished it as we are recording yesterday. I finished the show in 10 days, which is almost in a conglomeration of uh, roughly just under 80 hours. Like, that's how long the TV show is, the whole show and uh is that a little obsessive yeah yeah it might be uh did i watch anything else pretty much besides the show in that time period no no i did not uh this the show was absolutely amazing and i understand why some consider it to be the best tv show ever it's i knew it would be something i'm into because as a kid, I, I grew up and uh, basically the first almost movie series and book series I got into was Harry Potter. And uh, let's just say when I was younger, when I was younger and uh, I think it was about third grade, I actually had like a first grade reading level, which is not good. I was put in uh, special ed when I was in second grade. Um, basically because of my grammar, reading, ability, um, just shit along those lines. Nothing necessarily major, but that was just the main thing. And it was the, I think the main subject I always struggled with the most was English because I do find it hard at times to accumulate and use the right words. I still have issues with that where sometimes my brain shuts off probably the most, um, when it comes to language and how I uh even in texting how I write um and even how I talk sometimes there's things I could say that's better and I just don't but let's just say <clears throat> either way I was in special ed and I had a first grade reading level in third grade I was doing so poorly that <laughs> they wanted me to just start reading anything and I don't necessarily even remember how it happened I know that for a gift my uncle bought me the entire series but somehow I got into Harry Potter I don't even know what pointed me in that direction I think probably because of I at that point I would have seen the first movie at least because that movie was already uh let's say seven years old if that seems at all correct and So it got me interested in in the books to begin with. So I decided to read them. And it was uh, was quite a journey. I think it took me almost the full school year to read this book, just piecing through it. But by the end of the year, I went from a first grade reading level to a fifth grade reading level. And uh, it kind of changed how I was a lot as a kid in school. I was the motherfucker that would be walking walking through school in line like you always got to do you know you got you got to follow the leader or whatever that bullshit is and i would have my head down and my nose in a book the entire time as we're walking through the hallways as we're going to places any free option i got sometimes when i was on the bus it just depended on the day or scenario but i i loved harry potter i think it took me from third grade to fifth I think to finish the series I didn't necessarily read in the summer because I mean that's summertime who who wants to read then but an amazing series and it kind of changed my life so I was already into fantasy novels I guess and and that kind of imagination I've always had that kind of uh 
real in-depth imagination and and really I'm good at immersing myself into um, books and fantasy worlds when it comes to stuff like Harry Potter or just other other books I've read like An Ember in the Ashes if you guys know that series um, Percy Jackson that was a big one for me uh, the TV show Avatar like a lot of shows I was really able to have quite an imagination and uh, really live and love these characters and these worlds that these authors have built. So it makes sense that I enjoyed Game of Thrones, and I had a feeling I would. I feel like eventually at one point I will read the book. I actually talked to someone today, and they said, it might disappoint you because you kind of already know things that are going to happen, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, eh, I don't, I don't know if that would necessarily be an issue because part of the reason why I want to read it is to see if there's any missed plot points or something that I didn't know about or what what all got cut out of the book itself. And, I mean, it's kind of the same with Lord of the Rings. I've never read the books, but I want to. But I've seen the movies. And uh, just because it's like I, I know that the the books are more in-depth than the movies themselves. I do not know if you can see my dog right now, but he is uh, he's itching. You know, pu- puppies are here yet again. And um, so it was quite a crazy, amazing show. It it definitely hooked me. I do have a slight addictive personality when it comes to certain things. And I basically, well, part of the reason why I was able to finish it as quickly as I did was I would probably be in bed from 10 o'clock to 1 o'clock every night on my phone watching it on HBO and just sitting there and, and just binging it and watching as much as I can basically until 1 a.m. the past like week and a half. So <laughs> it uh, definitely took up a lot of time. And uh, I think that's also one reason why I wanted to finish it because I was like, I just need to get it over with so I can work on stuff. I'll be honest, this is probably the main reason why this episode is probably coming out late is because I was supposed to record last night so I could get something out today. But um, in all reality, I didn't and I started watching Game of Thrones because I was on the final season like episode three so I was like halfway through the final season and I just was like fuck it and I started watching that and it kind of hooked me and uh, I just kind of ended up watching it instead of doing this stuff but I'm here I'm here I'm recording and I was like you know what this is a good topic um I will just go ahead and state before I get into like actually discussing the the series itself too in-depthly um well hi before i before i just oh oh hi what are you what are you doing oh yeah why are you climbing on me bud (laughs) Ah. Ah. oh 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 thanks for the kisses i love oh yeah i love you too i love you too well cut it out man you want on you want on the podcast oh say oh 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 no help Diesel, uh, someone help me. <laughs> what are you doing? Get down, guys! Help someone. Call, call nine one one. Oh, <laughs> Diesel, get <off. laughs> Stop! I got dog slobber all over my glasses, man. What the hell? You can hang out, but I'm I'm busy. I got dog hair. I'm sorry, guys. I got dog hair all on my microphone now. Um, but uh, anyways, I, I wanted to say before I really did get into certain details of the show that I, 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 I'm saying this and it, the show's at least been out for four years. But I mean, I know about it and I've seen spoilers even before I watched it. Like I knew certain plot points, but it's OK. Um, the, the, spo- just spoiler alert ahead if you have not seen Game of Thrones and want to because I probably will talk about I will talk about details in the plot and the ending so just a heads up but the show was very interesting yes it, it, it um the end of the show the finale like the last couple episodes came out the month I graduated so the show had ended four years ago it started in 2011 and um of course I knew of Game of Thrones I'd known about it I knew I knew that it was a big TV show. It was probably one of the biggest TV shows in the world of the last decade. And uh, I just never watched it. And part of it was because we never had HBO. And I guess at the time we could have actually bought the DVDs. I don't know why we didn't. Um, 
but either way, what we watched, or I, I watched it, and I, I just got into it, and I had a feeling I would love it, and I did, and um, it's, it, it is an amazing show. I don't, I don't know how to explain it, but it's, I, I don't know the details of the books themselves, but I think this is probably one of the best adaptations from a book to uh, TV or movies or whatever you want to call it to, to, to digital media. I, I would say that just, just in the sense of the amount of time in the show. Like I said, this show, the whole show its series was maybe roughly 80 hours of footage. And when it comes to, and that, that was maybe in, I don't know, six books. I don't, I don't know. It's like, I think it was like six to eight. I don't totally know. It was somewhere in there. Six to eight books, roughly. Harry Potter came out in eight movies from seven books. And, uh, and it had a lot. Where like the TV, the show was amazing. Or the show, the movies for Harry Potter, absolutely amazing. But is there a lot that was missed and cut out and details and stuff that you missed that aren't in the books? Yeah, 100%. But... I think just because the show had so much time to, I feel like, do more with, with the, the time they have. Because, I mean, when you think about it, uh, movies, even long ones, and movies especially in the 2000s, it seemed like a lot more in 90s were like maybe an hour and a half. Two hours was a long movie at the time now it's like a long you can't consider it to be a long movie unless it's like over two hours and 45 minutes because movie lengths have just gone up and it's like some of these some of these episodes were uh an hour and a half and every show was about an hour so it's like it has so much time to really develop and grow characters and plot points and details that a normal tv show i feel like hasn't like an average run time of run time of 45 minutes if not 30 and and an average movie let's say is two hours long it's almost half the length of a movie if not almost three quarters of a length of a movie so you're able to do a lot more and and so basically by the end of the one season you have basically if i do rough math almost 20 movie lengths of time that you don't have to to develop other stuff when it, when it comes to certain adaptations i mean like when you think about it look at avatar like those are long movies but and i know it's not based on a book series or anything like that but the actual scripts and the amount of footage they actually recorded was is almost like nine hours long Imagine if they they could do a five hour extended cut version. Imagine what might have been cut out that ne not necessarily is super important to moving the plot or the story, but just adds more to the characters in the world that we don't get to see, or or when it comes to Diesel, watch the phone, <laughs> or when it comes to like Lord of the Rings, it's like it's, it. I feel like it wasn't bad, but I haven't read the books to necessarily decide how well the adaptation is. But I mean, those movies were like three hours long, uh, pretty much or something. So it's like that full that full, uh, length within three movies was probably like eleven hours or more worth of footage. So it it actually did a lot. But there's just there's just a lot to do when it comes to this show, and it was it was very interesting and and it just very intriguing. And something else that I found that was very unique to Game of Thrones is how the how the show itself was structured in the sense of I guess like the <clears throat> like the plot like it there's never I don't think been a show as in depth in the sense of what they what what's included in the plot Diesel, I don't know what the hell you're doing but you brought your ball and uh basically it's it's like you have at the beginning it's practically one or two storylines but at one point it's like it, it, it is like a book because i think i actually saw something where at one point the book follows 13 characters at once it is the most like certain books i've read than any other other movie because it follows everybody's story and and uh perspectives 
but trying to basically keep it in line with the story and people and books can be like that especially fantasy novels where it will be like one chapter is a chapter from this character so you're seeing everything in this specific character's point of view which in this show it would go from different segments it's like it's a 50 minute minute episode to an hour episode depending you cut it up and you might have five minute segments from different characters as the plot moves along for each and every one of them and maybe it comes back to a certain character again or or whatever and it kind of bounces around just just like a book would do and uh, and I thought I read something that one of the books does is written and seen between the perspectives of almost 13 people so imagine imagine how that book is written when it comes to the chapters and how everything's structured it it is similar to the show and I feel like it's one of the first ones to do that and I believe part of the reason is trying to base it off the book. And I also think part of the reason is there's so many characters. That's just the best way to necessarily do it and structure it. Where I guess on a show that's not based on a book, but let's say Big Bang Theory, there's only like six main characters roughly. Excuse you. Hey. Hey. Diesel. We're not playing ball right now. <laughs> but it it's I don't know, it, it's it's hard to explain because it it's uh I lost my train of thought. But it it is cool because like if you go to Big Bang Theory, there's like six characters total and you might hop from one and it's not even one person's perspective it's i mean obviously it's a sitcom so it's different but you're basically maybe bouncing between two groups and that's it max or most of the time it's basically one group that you follow for the most part so it's it, it is it is really different and then not only that like everybody said and i knew beforehand the show is not afraid to kill off characters and it's not even the show it is the books as well but this show is brutal when it comes to people's deaths. Very similar to, I feel like, old-timey England when there, it was just an all-out all war. And um, it's just ridiculous the amount of character growth and development and, and stuff you have. Like I think part of it, like I said, is because of the length of the show. You're just able to flesh out characteristics from each person and really see how they change and adapt and how they grow as a person and uh i feel like they did that the best compared to most tv shows like it it was really really good because in it you both saw the characters and the actors themselves grow alongside the show and it was it was very very impressive what they were able to do and And, uh, and I also, I guess we'll just go ahead and say this now that I do understand why when the finale of the show came out, there was like a, so much of a outrage for how it ended. I wasn't necessarily upset with how it ended. I, I've never read the books and I know that the last book isn't out yet. So basically some of the stuff that happens in the show might not actually happen in the book. And so that that is interesting to say the least, because you would have thought that you would not have the writers of a TV show and the story in their own way, but it is what it is. But it, it is very interesting because I I see why people hated it. Uh, I was talking to someone today and and they kind of told me and how they how they looked at it with how. Um, they felt like the last season was very rushed in particular. Maybe not necessarily the seventh to me didn't seem super rushed, maybe partially, but nothing too too crazy. And that, um, which I can kind of see that because I feel like the beginning of it was very slow building. And then it just so slowly sped up and got more chaotic and more hectic. And the stuff that was happening in the show just got crazier and crazier. And, uh, and it was just very very interesting like i wasn't expecting the characters to end up where they did i wasn't expecting 
uh what what else was i not expecting i wasn't i don't know it was just i knew parts certain parts of the show like beforehand i mean it's it's a show that started over 10 years ago so it's like there's a lot there's a lot that i've missed like i knew uh before i even watched the show i knew ned stark died early i knew that john snow killed khaleesi i knew that Arya killed the night king i knew that khaleesi was john's aunt and that they got together i knew uh kind of i knew the character of joffrey and Tyrion, and how one was an uncle and one's a, a shitty shitty nephew and just a bitch that ends up being king there, there was and i knew that he died so there was there was very big plot points that i knew happened i just didn't know necessarily when i didn't necessarily know why or how all of this wrapped in together so i was still going into it pretty pretty much on a whim to to what would happen i guess the finale i kind of knew but didn't fully know like i knew she died but i didn't know why he killed her and uh killed khaleesi so it was it was still kind of a surprise not necessarily her death like i saw the reasoning behind it as i was going into it but i see why people were upset um and one of the reasons was i don't know it felt like khaleesi's character in particular it, it changed so much to the end of the show how she burns down king's landing with uh her dragon and it just it didn't seem like it was necessarily her because they did represent her as such a good person and they also built it up for john to basically be the savior for westeros and because he has he's half northern half targaryen and that he's he's the he's the one for the throne and how he'll be the person to unite the continent or whatever and so it was it that that was interesting because it, it just no, nothing ended up necessarily happening with it he ended up being sent to the night's wash and and went north of the wall um because he he killed the queen so it was it was just kind of like well what was the point of that big build-up and then not only that with Khaleesi is like I guess in bits and pieces you kind of saw the um, the build up and character development of like oh maybe she is a little oh but ma maybe she is a little um, uh, evil or crazy in some way and and it kind of became more obvious obviously as the show ended because they kind of. We're like, well, if you look at this, this, this kind of makes sense a little bit in the sense of like her having a basically positive feedback loop to killing evil people at no cost practically and being rewarded for it and stuff like that. Um, and it, it was just it was very weird. And she also became like she basically ended her father's last wishes. She 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 did that without even trying. Her father wanted, with the Mad King, wanted to destroy, destroy the city and burn it down, and she basically fulfilled those wishes, twenty years later, or however long it is, twenty five years later, and uh, so it, it's just kind of, it is interesting. You saw that part of the character slowly building, but it was still just kind of like, it was gut wrenching because. You you're watching the show. There's this there's this gradual build up and character development, and then it really starts to pick up in like season four to six, and then it's like oh shit, Night King, Night King, this stuff's happening. How do we what what are we gonna do? Uh, season seven, like oh let's oh united together to fight the ice fuckers and all this shit, and you're and you're really building building building, and as at the end they're like oh they're here they're they're at Winterfell they're it's it's time like they're here this is it and then the start of it is like all right here we go the battle that we've all been waiting for for years not me literally but whatever and 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 it happens and and then they win obviously and everybody is like joyous and in celebration and and everybody's happy and things are looking good for everyone for a second and then and then from there, you're on like a fucking high for the show. And then it just plummets. Not for, I mean, it, it happens kind of gradually. Like first, it's like, okay, let, let's move the troops south. And we're going to take it from the queen. And she's crazy. And we're going to beat her. Cool. Good. I don't like her anyways. 
and they're and it's like okay she's fine with the dragons and then all of a sudden one of her dragons gets shot out of the sky and killed at, within seconds and you're like whole oh shit and then not only that their fleet gets destroyed again and then they kidnapped uh uh ooh i'm blanking on her name i know it but i don't know how to pronounce it properly off the top of my head um but they ca- kidnap her friend and her advisor and then they decapitate her and that was like the first first thing of like oh this is not go-. like it just slowly was like uh oh uh oh shit's getting bad shit's getting bad shit's getting bad and, and they breach the gates and it's like oh okay so this might like this might be it and they'll win and they throw down their arms they surrender the city surrenders and then she just flips a switch and just decides to destroy everything and it and it's like the longer and longer it goes the more depressed you get because you're just like why why are you doing this stop like please and at least that's how i felt so it was like by the end of it between it all it was like i don't am i depressed right now like what the fuck like i was just like so happy and giddy and excited to watch the show and and in this episode alone it just took all of that away and so it was very it was very like you get like slapped in the face with it a little bit and you're like oh 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 shit and and like but you know that like john john's decision what it has to be and you see him trying to like uh basically explain himself on why why he shouldn't kill her and all this stuff and, but he does because he knows it's the right thing to do and then you're like okay well maybe he's still gonna be the king and then they're just like no and that's like brandon is king and it's like okay I, that's cool i see the reasoning uh, it makes sense he has all of human history in his mind um a lot to learn from cool enough and then th- th- that's fine it was so unexpected like I, I didn't necessarily see that coming at all and and then like the kingdom uh, the north is their own kingdom now again and all this shit it's like fair enough but then john after basically saving the world twice or several times um throughout the series practically and, and doing all the good he did and trying to protect and save as many people as possible then the rightful heir of the crown and the dude that's going to bring the north and south together and like all this shit and it just is like nope never mind he killed the queen he's a treason we're gonna kill him oh okay a little compromise we're not gonna kill him but he has to go back up to the nice wash when the fucking wall's broken in on one side, the Nightwalkers aren't a threat anymore. There shouldn't be a threat from the North necessarily. And um, and, <laughs> and all this shit. And they're just like, fuck it. Send him to the farthest corner. Like, he hasn't been with his family. He's had a rough seven years. But fuck him. And so it's, it's just like, wow, I did not see that coming at all. And then Arya just deciding to say, hey, fuck this shit. I'm hopping on a boat. I'm going west. I'm going to see if there's an edge to this bitch. And it's just like, that seems super random too. Like, I mean, I know the character is like adventurous and, and bold and brave, but I was just like, that seems still very out of nowhere. And, uh, so it's just, I don't know. It was like a, it was a good ending, but it wasn't because it was like, this isn't necessarily what I expected. It's not as happy as I thought it would be. It is sad, um but at the same time they gave a little bit of closure where it's like everybody ended up in the positions where they are and this is just what it is and it's like not necessarily bad but it's not necessarily like exactly what you wanted either so it's just it it was a lot so i understand why when the show came out i was hearing people being like oh my gosh like season eight just like ruined my life like i loved it but this was rough and so after that i did i did understand because it was like, I didn't know what to think. Like, I finished it last night at 1.15 a.m. And I, I'm just sitting there, and I'm just like, whoa. Like, what now? Like, I don't e- I don't even know what to do. Like, I guess I'll go to bed. I, I don't know what to think about this. And I'm just like, well, I guess um, guess the show's over. And, and it's an amazing show, and I do recommend it to anybody that hasn't seen it. I will probably eventually rewatch it at one point or at least maybe watch episodes or something like it, it was a definitely a good show, but I don't know. I feel like I needed more closure. I feel like most people did. And, 
even if they had another season or a few other episodes to kind of show the end results and, and what, what exactly happens in the actual transition and not just cut it like it is. Although that is normal for a TV show and movie, it just kind of sucks. And you wish there was just a little more. And this one, I feel like it was kind of needed. Like, they could end it where it was, but I feel like they definitely could have done just a tad bit more. And uh, But it, it was a great show. It really was. Um, I just, I don't know. I was really into it. And I, I liked trying to predict what the hell happened and stuff like that. And I was, like, talking to coworkers and people that have seen it. And I was like, oh, my gosh, like, I know that this happens, but like, what if they do this? Or why the fuck did this just happen? Like, what? Like, it was just a lot going on. And, um, but it was really good. It, it really, really was. And I don't know. It was just, it was just an amazing show. Like, I, I it's hard to explain, but it, for some, especially for someone that hasn't seen it, it is, it is hard to explain. And you're like, oh, it can't be that good. But I guess it also depends on what you're into. But for me personally, I I really enjoyed it, and I think I think a lot of people would. It is definitely very violent and gory, and uh, stuff like that. So it is very actiony at times, and then at the same time, it's not. And it's like almost like a drama too. So it's it definitely keeps your and it keeps you interested in a lot of different ways. But I wanted to kind of go over, I guess, my list of my worst the least favorite and favorite characters in game of thrones i'm not gonna do this in order because i don't think i could necessarily but when it comes to the people i hated the most in this show i think one was obviously the queen i think everybody hated her uh and joffrey like those are two for sure people you hated well actually i think most of the people i hate everyone hated but Ramsey, uh, shit, I'm blanking on his name, but Ramsey, whatever the fuck, the bastard, Ramsey Snow, or whatever, I hated him so much, I had no clue he was going to be such an integral person through the show, and his sadistic character, and the stuff he did, like, Joffrey was bad, but he was worse, because he actually did shit, uh, Joffrey, I feel like, was more psychological torture and torment, where this was physical abuse and it it is like two two sides of the coin in that in that sense and it was just like you you saw him for a bit and then he just happened to keep being in the damn show and um it just kept doing worse and worse shit and then killing like the youngest stark boy and and all this stuff it was it was wild and i was so happy when that motherfucker got killed Uh, another one that i didn't like was little finger um peter uh i almost said peter dinklage but what was his name oh no uh lord uh wow i'm baylor no i fuck see i i could have done this like yesterday but now i already forget the little finger i mean that's also what he's known as i hated him because i knew he was always up to no fucking good and i never trusted him I didn't know what to think of him for a long time. And when he died, I cheered. I cheered verbally. I yelled and said, fuck yeah. Like, fuck you. Like, finally. Like, and I'm just like, because it was such a glorious moment. I loved it so much. But I think for me, those are probably my least favorite characters of the show. As for some of my favorites, I think my top two and i think it's probably the same for most is Tyrion lannister john snow and uh and probably i mean i think everybody kind of likes khaleesi i think Arya's is up there uh i think those are probably my top three i also did like brienne of tarth she, she her character was pretty badass and fun The one thing that for some reason I found so cringy and I did not like was when she was fighting her yells and screams It was very like off putting, but it was like, it wasn't like a war cry. It was just like weird grunts and, and shit. It was just like, I don't, it'd be, I don't know. It'd be weird to fight her just because of that situation. And I'm just like, uh, girl, just shh, shh. 
fight fight more quiet like everybody else i don't know like i'll love to tell you but what favorite deaths though in the show i think i'm gonna have to say obviously little finger it's gonna go little finger joffrey and the queen i wish the queen died um in a different way for some reason i felt like that was too good for her. just a, a cave-in i feel like there needed to be more but it was such a good show and i'm i'm such a a child for binging it like i did i typically i typically do not binge tv shows but that i went all out for sure and it, it was it was amazing and i can't i don't know i might watch house of dragons i really don't know but i i I think, yeah, I, th- I think it was definitely one of my favorites, 100%. And it was a really, really good show, and I, I hope, I think I'm not the only one, but I, I want some of my friends to finish watching it so I can talk to them about it. By the way, Noah, if you're listening, uh, I hope you didn't listen to this whole thing because I definitely ruined parts of the show, but it's it's okay. Still watch it. It's still that good. It's it's an amazing show, and there's so many plot twists and character developments and stuff you don't expect absolutely amazing i don't work for hbo i don't work for game of thrones but if you guys want me to i'll work for it well game of thrones is over never mind Mm. but i've never watched house of dragons i might watch house of dragons now at least maybe watch it here and there we'll see but it, it was it was good and uh well it'll be interesting but I'm ready to start this year. Honestly, I feel like this is part of the reason why my year started off slow is because of that TV show. Because I got so invested in it that it was hard to get other stuff done. Like the podcast and stuff for the podcast or going to the gym. Because I'd stay up till 1 instead watching Game of Thrones. So I still got to start. I feel like I really got to start myself up this year and get back get back at it. You know, got to Got to get after it because if I don't, what am I doing? And, uh, so I'm kind of excited for that, but it, it's, a uh, it, it was so much fun and I, I hope other people enjoyed it as much as I did because it, I, I love shit like that and the comment below, like your favorite characters and, and, uh, w- what was your favorite scene or part of the show? Because I, I, I think, oh man, I could probably talk about the show for a while with people easily because I'm that big of a nerd a hundred percent, but it, it's awesome. Also update before i do end today's episode carnivore diet i am 11 days in it's not going bad i finally bought some fruit and i did tell you guys i was gonna do a little fruit it doesn't seem very carnivore ish but um i'm not a fucking t-rex and even rogan and other people would agree that you don't necessarily want to eat only meat i'm not saying you can't but to definitely help with the your ass it's you're in your asshole it is better for you to at least eat a little fruit and just get a little bit of sugar and carbs and it It definitely helps and it's and it's bad it's not bad so it's going well i mean i think now that after i went to the grocery store this weekend it's actually a little easier i have more options um i've lost like i said still i'm sitting at this point around uh, eight pounds and I'm eating without even necessarily counting calories either. Like the last two weeks, I'm going to be also counting my calories so I can hit the targets I want to as well. And, um, so it, it, it's not bad. I I don't necessarily, I don't think I feel any different, maybe a little more energy, but I don't know. I think I don't, I don't necessarily feel sluggish. It just kind of depends on the day. And I don't necessarily think it's from my diet. I think it's just been how I've been sleeping in general. If I do feel a little, a little sluggish or not. Uh, but, uh, so I'll be, I'll be curious to see the next two weeks at least and how I'm feeling, uh, once I actually start getting some decent sleep and gym sessions and stuff like that. And I think, it'll, I think it would even be better. So I, I am kind of excited for that, but I'm excited for this new year. I hope everybody is. I know it's not New Year's now, but I'm saying this because it is the start of January. Um, I still want to do quite a lot. Uh, I want to have some buddies on the podcast eventually and stuff, uh, especially now that the video podcast is kind of a thing. I know that it works. I used to do with my sister and stuff. I would like to try having more people on here and there. So just to change it up and make it more fun and easier on me to, to prepare. I know I've been slacking. And, uh, hopefully 
I actually prepare some topics more, and that's one reason why I finished the show last night. But hey, here we are, and uh, and I think that will call it. But I hope everybody has an amazing week, and uh, go watch Game of Thrones, and be sure to subscribe and like the like the video if you do. And I will uh, I'll see you guys all next week. Thank you very much for listening and watching. Peace out, everybody.